Okay, I am going to go ahead and get started with today's topic. I want to <clears throat> I want to say good morning and thank you for joining me today. Welcome to day nine. I can't believe we are there, guys. We are almost there. Welcome to day nine of my 10-day live challenge. This is exciting. Today, we are discussing hiring right for your non-medical home care agency. So we'll be talking about how to both hire um, and attract that main talent that you will need to help operate your non-medical home care agency. Um, before we get to the content today, as a reminder, I've created two checklists to help aid you in your journey. Both are absolutely free. I have created one for those of you starting your non-medical home care agencies. And of course, I created a general one for those of you standing up any other type of business. So I'm really looking for feedback there. If you've already downloaded it, please um, feel free to share with me what you think of the checklists. Um, and with that, let's go ahead and get started. So um, I have received this question quite a bit. And of course, this question comes up because, again, there are several non-medical home care agencies. There's lots of competition out there. So not only are we competing for clients, but now we are competing with hiring our non, I'm sorry, our home health aides. And so you really want to position yourself because this is definitely a way that you can create your niche is having a specific type of home health aid um, that's attracted to your organization. So I wanted to spend some time talking about that today. And the first thing that we want to do here is create a job description with your client's needs in mind. So I have actually needed home health aides, um, both personally and professionally. Um, personally, I have needed them for um, my mom and my mother-in-law, and then, of course, uh, professionally due to me having, you know, my non-medical home care. And so I have had <laughs> both good and bad experiences. Um, but I really consider myself lucky to have had both those experiences. And the reason why I say that is we have at certain times um, trusted that a person knew what they were doing, trusted that a person had the experience that was needed, only to find out that this person couldn't provide the type of care or the level of care that we were real that we were needing. So as frustrating as those experiences were, it really helps me to have that keen eye on whether someone really wishes they had a skill set to offer you because they need a job or they actually have it because of the experience. So as, as quickly as you can, you want to develop that same type of um, that same type of sniff factor, if you will, to identify, um, you know, if these people will be a good fit for you and for your clientele, okay? So really become dialed in into whether or not a person is going to be a value add for your organization. Now, let's say you have not. Let's say you have not had to have a home health aide um, personally. You know, you don't know, you don't have any family members who have need a home health aide. That's fine. Put yourself into your client's situation. What would your client want? What would you need if you needed a home health aid? So those clients' wants and needs should be reflected in your job description, okay? Additionally, you want to beef up the benefits section of your posting to attract that top-tier candidate. So this is where, um, you know, again, this is addressing the fact that these home health aids, they have choices, right? They have different places, different home care agencies that are looking for the same thing. So you really want your job description to, to look appealing to a person who may be in that situation. Okay, so any benefits that you have, you definitely want to highlight those here. So any benefits, any medical benefits, any room for growth, any bonus programs, incentive programs, you may not want to highlight all of them, right? But you certainly want to highlight those main ones, those main ones that would definitely attract who you're looking for. 
The second tip I have for you is to create buzz around your role, okay? So of course, you're going to post your position to multiple job boards. So those are your Indeed.coms, career builders, zip recruiters. Um, again, I really like care.com. You know, in the state of California, our home health aides do need to be registered uh, with the state. Um, you may want someone who's already CPR sat, um, certified. And so what I like about care.com is you can list those, um, you can list those um, attributes, okay? And they will return back to you. Of course, everyone who expressed interest in the position, but those key attributes, those things that you are looking for um, can be placed at the top of your list, okay? Um, because you can decide, you know, you can certainly help someone get registered because that could be embedded in your process. This certainly can be embedded in your recruiting process. If you want to help someone get certified with the state of California, if you um, have no problems with me, you know, getting um, your folks CPR uh, certified, absolutely, you can do that. Um, but if you're just starting out or if you're really trying to beef up or staff up pretty quickly, that might not be an option for you. So I like that care.com will reveal to you who has specifically what you're looking for for that particular time. Okay. And then, of course, you want to leverage your social media accounts. I, I, I think this is this is a no brainer for whatever position you're hiring for. If you have any type of presence on social media, you really want to make it known or create that buzz uh, that you have a position that's open. Um, LinkedIn is a great place to start because you can actually post the jobs there. Um, Again, they do have a trial period. I want to say it's a couple of weeks, maybe it's a couple of days um, so that, you know, you can get the job posted for free um, and create enough buzz, be, you know, then depending on how long you have it, you may incur a fee there. But I know that there's a, usually a trial period associated with that. But your Instagram, you know, I know when I needed a personal assistant just recently, I put that on my community page in YouTube and I actually did get a response from that. So leverage those platforms, leverage those platforms um, so that, you know, they use that to your benefit. But whatever you have access to, <laughs> so wherever you have that presence, you want to make sure that you spread the word that you're hiring. Okay. And lastly, have you been lucky enough to find the right home health aid? Okay. Now it, it switches to is game on. I can't remember what video I was talking about last week, but almost as soon as you hire somebody, they either never stop looking for a position or really quickly, as soon as that excitement wears off, they're looking for something else. They're looking for another role. So now it's kind of game on. It's game on to retain that help aid. OK, especially the right one. If you found a good one, I know I, I have a couple of excellent ones that come to mind and we really did um, put a lot of effort into making sure they were as equally happy with us as we were with them. OK, so some things that come to mind, use their skills to train up less experienced staff. You know, most people who are high performing, um, it, you know, the challenge with them is you don't want them to get bored right? So this is something that you can do. This is a stretch assignment that you can create for them. Help them to onboard your new home health aides because you definitely want to pass down that skill set from home health aid to home health aid, right? To ensure that um, that level of excellence is carried out and carried down in your organization. Um, you want to create incentive programs to promote loyalty, so um, where are you finding issues with retaining your, your home health aides? A lot of times it's, it's attendance, right? Attendance could be an issue. And then of course you wanna promote healthy service. You want that customer, you want that client to feel good to refer your organization to other potential family members and friends. And so remember that home health aid is a reflection of your organization. And so you might want to create an incentive programs around those two areas, right? So service and attendance. You know, if you're a smaller um, home care, uh, non-medical home care agency, maybe you want to have a caregiver of the quarter. You know, if you're large and you have quite a few, maybe it's caregiver of the month. 
but just something to where there's pride of, of their of position, right? They have pride. They're happy that they're there. They are really a spokesperson for your organization because they are so happy to be working for you, okay? And then, of course, you want to create that career path to boost loyalty. So maybe there's a home health aid one, maybe there's a home health aid two, and then they could get promoted up to a three before they're considered a lead home health aid. You know, maybe there's an option to grow someone to a supervisor. You know, we talked about trainers earlier. So again, just kind of infusing that career path within your organization. And then lastly, I have create referral programs. So this is where birds of a feather flock together really works for you. Because if you have an excellent caregiver, if you have an excellent home health aide, and they want to refer someone to the organization, that's a no-brainer, right? You know, in terms of relationship, hey, you want to refer Fajika to the organization, you make sure she's trained up. You make sure she's good to go. That person's going to be happy to do that because they want to get their person hired and they want that, you know, they want that referral bonus. Okay. Okay, guys, we are already at the top of um, our time together. I should say the end of our time together. Um, I do see a couple people jumped on this early in the morning. So thank you for supporting <laughs> my video this early in the morning. Um, but the three topics, once again, or the three tips is to create a job description with your client's needs in mind. You want to create buzz around your role. And then the third tip is, have you found the right home health aid? Now we want to switch to retaining them. Okay, guys, I will get this uploaded for you. Um, and then do not forget tomorrow, it'll be the regular time, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. <laughs> I am going to end the series tomorrow with how do you start a non-medical home care agency? So I'll see you at 10 a.m. in the morning. Have a blessed one, guys.